Okay, Rabbi Yisai, we're on Daf Ayin Ches Samad Aleph. We're on the third line. The Mishnah had told us that you have to give a get into a woman's hand or place it on her property. Um, and <clears throat> one of the things that the Mishnah had said is that if the man places it even on the bed where he and his wife are lying, then she's not divorced because he didn't put it in her hand. He didn't place it in her property. He left it on the bed. The bed belongs to him. So it's not a valid transfer of the get to her possession. So the Gemara now says, Amar Rava, lo shanu ela b'mita shalo, aval b'mita shalo migureshes. So the Gemara says that that's only if the bed belongs to the man. But what if the bed, we could create a scenario where she is the owner of the bed um, uh, and um, she gets it back upon the divorce, so the bed is hers. Then it is a valid divorce. So Tanya Nami Hachi, Rabbi Eliezer, Omer Bimita Shalom Eina Migureshes, Bimita Shalom Migureshes. That's what the Brisa says as well. For the Gemara asks, Uv Bimita Shalom Migureshes, Kelav Shalokech Birshus Mocher Hu, Shamas Mina Kelav Shalokech Birshus Mocher Kana, Kana Lokech. The Gemara says, but listen, we had a question in Maseches Bava Basra on this very issue. Let's say the receptacle of the receiver is in the, on the land, on the property of the giver. And the giver wants to make a kinyan such that the receiver will be kona, the thing that he wishes to give to him. So he wants to take this object, right, place it in the receptacle of the receiver, which is resting on the property of the giver. And the Gemara in Bava Basra says, we're not sure whether that's a valid kinyan. On the one hand, you're transferring it into his receptacle, but on the other hand, the receptacle is resting on the giver's property, so maybe that's not a valid transfer. And here you're telling me that even if the bed <clears throat> that belongs to her, which is the receptacle, is resting on the husband's property, then it is a valid get. So are you therefore saying that you can answer the question that we left off as a question in Bava Basra? That's not that doesn't make sense because then you should, the Gemara of Bava Basra should have referenced our this brisa. So the Gemara says lo tzricha de gavoa asara. The Gemara says no. When you're dealing with a bed that is elevated off the ground ten tfachim, so then everyone would agree that it's considered to be significantly or sufficiently detached from the property of the giver, such that it has the ability to acquire for the receiver. The Gemara now says, kare, but what about the fact that the, 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 the legs of the bed are resting on the property? And if the legs of the bed are resting on the property, doesn't that mean that the landowner in some way still controls the receptacle of the bed? The Gemara says, Amakom kare lo kapti inchi. The Gemara answers no, is that since the husband has full utility of his land beneath the bed, and it's just those four little points where the bed legs are that he's sort of not able to use, a man, in this case the husband, will be willing to relinquish the rights, the stake that he holds on that little tiny piece of property where the bed legs are resting, and relinquish that to the recipient, relinquish that to his wife. And therefore, uh, the Gemara's suggestion is that as long as the husband relinquishes that property, at least temporarily, to the owner of the bed, which is his wife, the entire bed is, con is considered to be either elevated above the husband's property or the bed legs resting on what's her property, at least temporarily. And therefore, the bed can be kona of the get. Now, l'so cheka o l'so kalasa migureshes. Then the Mishnah had said that if a husband places or throws the get into her bosom or into her basket, she will be divorced. Am I? So the Gemara says, why should this work? Caleb shalokech birshus mochir. Once again, if the basket is resting in the husband's property, then you have the same issue that in Bava Basra we were not sure whether that works. If it's a receptacle that's resting in the giver's property, does that work to be kona for the receiver? The Amar of Yehuda, Amar Shmuel, Kigon Shahisa Kalasa Tuluyaba. So we're talking about a case in our Mishnah where the basket is tied to her. Let's say, for example, she's wearing a sash or a belt around her waist and the basket is tied to the sash. Mm -hmm. That's where the husband puts the basket. So it's not resting on the husband's property, it's actually on her person. Mm -hmm. 
That's the way these Amoraim learn it as well. But for Reb Shimon ben Lakish, Amar Kishura Afal Pisha Eina Tuluya. Reish Lakish is even more liberal. He says even if the basket is just tethered to her in some way, even if it's resting on the ground that belongs to her husband, it nevertheless is considered to be in her domain, <coughs> and she can thereby be divorced. Ravada Bar Ahava Amar Kegon Shahaisa Kalasa Muneches La Ben Yar Choseha. Ravada Barava says, I'll go even further, even if the basket is not tethered to her at all. But let's say she's sitting down, and right between her legs where she's sitting down, she's keeping the basket, and the husband tosses it into the basket. In that situation, even if she's in her husband's house, the basket is considered to be resting in her domain. And why is it? Because wherever a person is, person is standing or sitting is considered to be that person's domain, even if they're sitting in someone else's property. Because the property owner is considered to relinquish temporarily that space for the sake of the person to accommodate the person standing or sitting. So therefore, since it's proximal to her, it's right between, uh, it's right between her legs, so therefore we say that it's resting in her domain, at least her domain temporarily, and she's thereby divorced. Rav Mishar Shia Bar Rav Dimi Omar Kagon Shahaya Bala Mocher Kalasas. He says, no, the basket can work even if it's not mamish close to her body, even if it's in a different room. But here's the scenario. The husband is a basket merchant, and therefore he has a whole room that he sets aside that he sort of relinquishes a sense of ownership on the land that the baskets are resting on, at least temporarily, for customers to come and buy the baskets and try them out and so forth. His wife's basket happens to be there in the shop also with all the other baskets that he would like to sell, and therefore it's in a place where the husband has uh, already mentally relinquished the rights of that land ownership, and therefore putting a get in that basket completely works. And Rabbi Yochanan Omar, Makom Cheka Kanuila, Makom Kalasa Kanuila, and Rabbi Yochanan goes even further and he says, You can say such an argument even without suggesting that the husband is a basket merchant. Because essentially, what Rabbi Yochanan is suggesting that a husband relinquishes to his wife certain parts of his house where she can use for her own utility, such as the place where she's going to put her basket. And I'll give you an illustration. Uh, most of us have a walk in closet in our master bedroom, right? What part of the, the, you know, usually a husband has a little bit less than 50%, if not more, <laughs> if not more than that, uh, of the uh, walk-in closet. And whatever parts of the walk-in closet that belong to his wife, you have no dominion whatsoever over that portion. She could put in the, uh, the, um, an elephant in there and you would never know about it because that's her part of the closet, right? So therefore, it's the same thing over here. Rabbi Yochanan's attitude is is that it's natural for a husband to relinquish space in his house for, her, for his wife's effects. And therefore, the very fact that her basket that she uses for her effects is resting in the house means that the land that it's resting on is also relinquished to her, at least temporarily. Omar Rava, my time at the Rabbi Yechanan, lefi she'en adam akbid lo al makam cheika v'lo al makam kalas. And that's essentially what Rav is, ex- is explaining in Rabbi Yechanan. A man doesn't mind if his wife uh, has her uh, ut- uh, utility items resting in his house. He's happy to relinquish that space to her. Tanya na mihachi, zarku lo l'soch cheika, l'soch kalas, l'soch kol davar shuhu ke kalasa, hareze meguresh. And the b'risa seems to support it in its language because it says that if you throw something into her bosom, the get into her bosom or into her basket or to anything else that's like her basket, so then she's divorced. And kol davar shu ke kalasa li isuye mai, what is that third thing that anything that's like a basket, what is that coming to include? It's the sack of dates. In other words, if your wife has her own stash, in today's it wouldn't be dates, today it would be chocolate, right? If your wife has a little stash, stash of chocolate by her, by her bedside, you know, for when she gets the... Um, chocolate attack, so then that's also that little bag or whatever, that little box of chocolates that wherever that's resting upon, that's her purview, that's her domain. Okay, let's go on to the next mission. Amar la kin si shtar choibze o mishat o shematsaso me achorav karabarehu gita, ein oget ad shiomer la ha gitech. 
Now, this husband is a little bit of a coward, okay, I must say. He goes over to his wife and he says, uh, here, honey, um, I have uh, some bills or I have a promissory note. Would you mind taking care of it? She opens up the paper and it says it's a get. It's not a bill and it's not anything else. It's a get, right? So, or let's say she says, oh, uh, husband, you, uh, there's a paper. You must have dropped it out of your back pocket. He says, oh, would you mind picking it up? She picks it up behind him and opens it up and discovers that it's a get. In both of those cases, the get is not valid until he says to her, Hagitech, this is your, he has to verbalize that this is your get in order for it to be considered to be delivery of a get. Now, this is unusual because normally the Torah says, Venosan biyada. He has to place it in her hand. And here, she seems to be picking it up from the floor, and yet we're still saying that it's a get. This is the, something that Kamar is going to address, where it doesn't seem like he's giving it to her at all. But one of the things that we do see is that even if it's after the fact that he notifies her that it's a get, as long as he's given it to her, then it's a valid get. And even if he notifies her after he's given it to her. Nasan And furthermore, let's say your wife's taking a nap and you uh, are a coward, so you put the get in her hand while she's sleeping. And then when she wakes up, she reads that, oh, this is a get. So that's also, she's not divorced until you as the husband say, this is your divorce. And once you say that, even though it's already in her hands, it's a valid divorce. So the Gemara now says, Ki Amar la hagitech mai havi, hava le tligitech me'al gabi karka. Ve Amar rava tligitech me'al gabi karka lo Amar klum. So the Gemara's question is quite natural. Even if, let's say, she picks up the get from the floor, she sees that something fell out of his pocket and she picks it up, right? So if you say hagitech, it's mashma from the Mishnah that she would be divorced, but you didn't place it in her hand. It's like telling your wife, pick up your get from the floor. That's not a valid divorce because the Torah says, Vin no san biyada. you have to give it to her, to give it to her in her hands. So the Gemara says, Ema shalfaso So the Gemara says, guess what? We're not talking about where she picks it up from the floor, but what she notices is, oh, sweetheart, you have a piece of paper hanging out of your belt. So he says, oh, would you mind pulling it out of my belt? She pulls it out of his belt, and then she discovers that it's a get. But wait a minute, says that's also not giving, because shalfaso nami haba'ina v'nasan biyada v'leka. But here too, there's no giving here. She, he's, he's totally passive in that case. So the Gemara answers, lo tzricha do'arak lechartse v'shalfase. The Gemara answers that he's not totally passive. What he's doing is, is that when she says, sweetheart, you have a piece of paper coming out of your belt, he leans over to her and says, would you mind pulling it out? By leaning over to her, to uh, help her pull it out of his out of his belt, <laughs> this in itself is an act of vinasan. He's act- he's participating in the transfer of the get from himself to her. Now, you know it's interesting. We had learned previously. Was it in Sota or was it in Gitan? I don't remember that if a woman doesn't have hands, she can't participate in the Sota ceremony because. Uh, she, the Torah says, "Venasan al kapeha." He has to place on her hands. It would, mash, it would be mashma also that if a woman doesn't have hands, you can't fulfill venasan biyada. But that's not necessarily so, because we see that if you put it in her property, she's also divorced. But we've never seen the requirement that a husband actually has to hand it over with his hands. You see an example <coughs> over here that nasina giving can be done with any part of your body provided that you're active and you're not passive. And that's what the Gemara is pointing out. And this price seems to bear this out, that if, um, if a man says to his wife, here, take this promissory note, or uh, she pulls it out of his belt and then discovers that it's really a get, it's not going to be a get unless afterwards he tells her, this is your get. That's according to Rebbe. Now, that's our Mishnah. But notice that in the Bryce it quotes a dissenting opinion. Reb Shimon ben Elazar Omer, La'olam eno get, at hemenu v'yachsar v'yitnen Allah, v'yomer la hagitech. Reb Shimon ben Elazar totally disagrees even with our Mishnah. He says that no, if at the time when you actually create the transfer from you to her by giving her the get, she was not aware that it's a get, then the giving was faulty, and there's no such thing as after the fact uh, uh, disclosure. You actually have to take the get back from her and then give it to her a second time while saying, Hagitech, this is your get. Now that's more intuitive. It's more, more in line with the way you and I would think. 
But that's not how the Mishnah Paskins. The Mishnah Paskins like Rebbe, which says that no, that as long as you even disclose to her after the fact that you gave it to her that it's a get, the get, the giving is a valid giving. Next, Nasno Biyada Vihi Yashena Neora Vikara Vahare Hukita, Eno Get Achi Omer Lahagita, Echdivre Rebbe, and Rabshuman Ben Alazar Omer Achi Tlenu Hemenu Viyasa Vitnano Viyoma Lahagita, Hagita. And here too, the second case of our Mishnah is also the subject of a machlokis. Rebbe, which is our Mishnah, says that if you put it into the hands of your sleeping wife, and then when she wakes up, realizes that it's a get, she's not divorced unless you verbally tell her, Ha Gitech, this is your get. And Rabbi Shimon Ben-Alazar disagrees here too. And he says, no, even if you tell her after the fact it's no good, you'd have to physically take it from her and give it back to her. And while you're giving it back to her the second time, saying, ha giteich, in order for it to work. Now, the Gemara says, utsricha. Why do I need to, why does the Bryson need to point out that this machlokus exists in both cases? Once I know the machlokus exists in the first case, can't I infer that the machlokus exists in the second case as well of the sleeping wife? The Gemara says, no. Di'i itmer bahach kamaisa be'ai kama rebi mishum dabasi grushehi. So the Gemara says like this, no, I wouldn't know that. Maybe Rebbe would only hold that saying to her after the fact that, you're, that this is your divorce is only because at the time when he gave it to her and she was unaware of what the paper was, at least she was a sentient, conscious being that was capable of being divorced. And maybe that's why it works, even though he only informs her after the fact. But let's say he gives it to a sleeping woman who's not conscious, since she can't be divorced in an unconscious state, maybe Rebbe would agree to Rav Shimon ben Elazar that you'd have to do a redo of the giving of the get. And therefore, Kamash Malan, that this machlokus is even in the second case. So and if I only had the machlokus cited for the second case, where a woman is sleeping, maybe only there would Rav Shimon ben Elazar say that you have to do a redo of the giving because she was totally unconscious. But in a kid's situation of the first case where she's conscious but she doesn't know what the piece of paper is, maybe he would be moted to Rebbe that all you have to do, you don't have to do a total redo, you just have to tell her after the fact this is your get. So therefore, Kamash Malan, that the Machlokas exists in both cases. Go ahead, Mark. So if he gave her, if she said, this is a get and gives it to her, that is considered a, a, a good get? Well, that's the standard case. That's the standard case where you say, here is your get. Ha gitech, this is your get that I'm giving you. We're talking about in our Mishnah where you gave her a piece of paper under false pretenses and you only inform her after the fact that what I've given you is a get. This is the part I was just trying to clarify. So in in the other Mishnah where he said he threw it into her lap, doesn't have to say it's a get. He does have to say it. it. He does have to say it. The point of our mission is saying that whenever you divorce your wife, you have to verbalize that ha gitech. You have to tell her that this is your get. Um Rava, Kasav Laget, Vinasno Biad Avda Yashenu Misham Raso, Hareza Get. Neyar Eno Get, the Habile Chatsara Mishamer Shalola Daita. So the if you recall we learned yesterday that by depositing a get on her property, she is divorced, but at least according to one opinion we had learned that she has to be uh, uh, watching over that property while the get is deposited in her in that property. If you deposit a get into her property that she's not watching over and she's not uh, securing, so then according to that opinion, it's not a get. And this is the same opinion that we're learning about over here. Her slave has the same status as her chatzer for the purposes of get. So if I deposit a get with the eved, it's like depositing it in her chatzer. However, it depends. Who's watching over? Who's securing the eved? If the Ebed is asleep and she's watching over him, so then it's like her watching over her courtyard, and therefore it's a valid get. But if the Ebed is awake, he's self-sufficient, he doesn't need her to watch over him, to protect him, and therefore it's like a self-sufficient chatzer, in which case it would not secure a divorce for her. When he throws it into the chatzer by watching, do you mean like in her domain, or do you mean like she actually sees the thing coming through? It's not that she has to see the get. She has to be the one securing the chatzer. Right. She has to be in charge of making sure that the se- so chatzer is secure. So she could be inside her house. Right? She could be inside her house as long as she's in control of the situation. And he has to yell out. He yes. has to get after her. Right. Does he have to yell? It's, it would seem that he has to yell out, here's your get. It could be after the fact, though. Right. It could be. It could be. It could be. Like this case, it's sleeping, so it's, it's right. the same thing. Right, right. 
So it's not clear what if there's a time lag. It's not clear whether he has to notify her in advance. There are a lot of things that are still ambiguous in, in these halachas, but at least we understand that this is, uh, uh, it, as far as the acquisition of the get through a chatzer, she can acquire the get through her chatzer as long as she's in charge of watching over it. Now, yashinu mishamrasa hareze get amai chatzer ma'aleches, yiva chatzer ma'aleches lokana. So the Gemara says, but wait a minute, we know from other Gemaras that in order for your chatzar to be kona for you, to acquire for you, it has to be a stationary chatzar. A moving chatzar does not work in order to acquire for you. And if this evid is mobile because he's animated, then how can he act as a chatzar to acquire for you? Now, you may remember we had this discussion in Masech Sukkah. We talked about using a human being as a wall for a sukkah. And the Gemara had said, you can use a human being as a wall for a sukkah. But the Gemara had said, but wait a minute. If the human is mobile and animated, how can he be used as a, as a wall? We had talked about a very similar argument that the wall has to be stationary. It can't be a moving wall. So you'll see. So the Gemara says, lokana. The Gemara says, maybe you'll argue that the Evid is sleeping. And by the virtue of the fact that he's sleeping, he's not moving. But Rava says that's not a valid argument because any time where we say that in order for a chatzar to be kona, it has to be stationary, as long as it's animated, even if it's at a stationary position, it still can't be kona because it's capable of moving. So the Gemara's answer is the The answer is is that we're talking about where the evid is tied up. So not only is he sleeping so that the woman is able is watching over him, but he's also completely incapacitated and is not able to move. We had said the same thing by using a human being as a wall for a sukkah. You have to actually physically tie him up so that he can't move in order for him to function as a wall for a sukkah. Now that's a true friend, right? I'd like to have lunch, would you mind being my, my sukkah wall, right? But any event, right? Yeah, please tie me up, right? Okay. I'm all so, tied up now. Yeah, right. So you can so put the cat down in her car while she's driving? Would a car be a valid uh, chatzar? So the answer is, it's a chatzar maleches, so it's not good. You'd have to remove the wheels of the chatz of the uh, of the car, or at least render the car completely immobile. But if it's her car and she has control over the car, inside. Yeah, but it's a chatzar maleches. That's a secondary disqualification. One disqualification is is that if she's not watching over it, another one if it's moving. So it would have to be totally immobile. It have to the keys would have to the engine would have to be turned off. Mistama, I'm not sure. That would be a moving violation. <laughs> okay, let's go on. Haisa omedes birshus arab in vizarkula karov lo megureshes karov lo eno megureshes mechza al mechza megureshes veeno megureshes. The Mishnah says that if the man and the woman are standing uh, proximally to each other, and he throws the get to her. Uh, and they're both standing in a Rishus Sarabim. So we know as a general rule that when you're standing in Rishus Sarabim, there's a four ama radius that is considered to be your domain. So if he throws it towards her, so as long as it's closer to her than it is to him, she's legally divorced. But if it's closer to him than it is to her, she's not divorced. If it's equidistant between the two of them, so then it's a suffix, whether the get has been activated or not, and so she's suffix migureshes. Now, this of course needs to be clarified. We're going to have to uh, flesh this out a little bit. Now, v'chein le'inu kiddushin, but the same rule applies by marriage. Not exactly a romantic way to get married, but if he throws the ring at her, <laughs> right, and he says, Hare'a as long as the ring is closer to her than it is to him, she's married. And v'chein le'inyan ha'chov, amr lo bal chovo, zrok li chovi v'zarkolo karav l'mal v'zach ha'mal v'karav l'loiva ha'loi v'chayev, mech tzal mech, so shneim yachloku. Same thing is true when you're paying back debts. Let's say the creditor says to the debtor, throw me the wad of cash that you owe me. If he throws him a wad of, you know, in a rubber band, a wad of bills, he throws it at him. As long as it's closer to the creditor than to the debtor when it lands, the debt is considered to be repaid. Such that, let's say, immediately after he throws the wad of cash on the floor, there's a huge earthquake and the earth opens up and swallows the wad of cash. 
the creditor can never cannot now say to the debtor, you never paid me back, I never received it. Since it was closer to him, it landed, so the creditor is considered to be paid back, even if he can't retrieve the cash now. If it's equidistant between the two of them, and then it gets swallowed up by a, by a fisher in the ground, so then, yachloku, it's a suffix, whether it, there's been payment or not, and they therefore split the difference. The debtor has to pay him half of what he originally owed. The Gemara now says, Hechi dami karov la vehechi dami karov lo. Now we really have to clarify, what do we mean when you say that if he threw the get and it was closer to her or she's divorced, if it's closer to him, she's not divorced, what does that mean? So, Amar Rav, Arba Amo Shala Zeu Karov La. Arba Amo Shala Zeu Karov La. So, Rav tells us what we would normally have expected, which is that you have a four Amar radius around you, and therefore, if he throws it within her Arba Amos, then she's considered to be divorced. But if it's within his Arba Amos, um, then uh, it's considered to be closer to him. So, Hechidami Mechts al Mechts. So the Gemara says, but wait a minute. If they're within their own Arba Amos, in other words, let's say the Gemara at this point in the Havamina is that. They're intersecting circles. And if you can imagine a circle around each one of them, that's their imaginary domain. If they're if it's intersecting, as long as it's within her Arba Amos, then she's divorced. But if it remains within his Arba Amos, she's not divorced. But then that the, then the question is, so then what's the case of Mechza al Mechza? What is that? What is that scenario? So the Gemara answers, Amrub Shmuel Barab Yischa Kagon Shayushneim Omdim Ba'arba Amos. So the answer is, is that both of them, uh, well, actually, I, sh- I, sh- I should say like this. The Gemara at the Havamina, sorry, the Gemara at the Havamina was that they're distant from each other. So if it lands within his Arba Amos, she's not divorced. If it lands within her Arba Amos, she is divorced. What does it mean halfway if the circles are not intersecting at all? So then, they, the, what do you mean? She's Suffolk Megureshi. She shouldn't be divorced at all because it's not within her Dalit Amos. So the Gemara answers... We're talking about a case They're both standing very close to each other, but they're both within each other's Arba Amos. So the Gemara says, but wait a minute, if that's, I mean, like they're, they're literally four Amos from each other, so her radius is within his radius, and his radius is within her radius. So if it's, so that's where we're talking about Mechza al Mechza, if it's equidistant between the two of them, so then it's a suffix. If it's closer to her, she's divorced. If it's closer to him, uh, she, she's not divorced. But the Gemara says, but wait a minute. But let's say which one, let's see which one of them was stationary first. Because how do you establish domain when you have a number of people packed in together? Right? You say whoever was there first acquired the Dalit Amos as his domain first, and whoever comes afterwards is now in the other guy's domain. So if the husband got there first and she came in afterwards, so then uh, it's his domain completely, she shouldn't be divorced at all. If she got there first and the husband came and threw it and came up close to her for Amos domain, then she should be completely divorced. So the Gemara says, Maybe you'll tell me that they arrived simultaneously and stood still at the exact same moment. Well, the Gemara says, but it's impossible to uh, to have two things exactly coincide in halacha. Either he got there first or she got there first, and if you're not sure which one it is, you'd say in all cases it's a suffix, regardless of whether it's closer to him or closer to her. So therefore, Ela Omar of Kahana, Hacha Beches Amos Mitsunsamos Askinan. So the answer is no. They're not standing within each other's Dalad Amos. They're standing at a distance of exactly eight Amos from each other. And that's the final uh, uh, upshot of the Gemara is that they're standing exactly eight amos from each other. You don't have intersecting circles. You have circles that are uh, touching at one point, right? Are coming in contact at one point. And as a result, it works like this. If it's closer to him, it's within his Dalit Amos. If it's closer to her, it's within her Dalit Amos. So the Gemara says, Viget, Yotse me Arba Amos Shalo, the Dalit Amos Shalo. So frek the Gemara v'ha agi the gabe. Then why are you telling me that if it's mechza al mechza, it's a suffix whether she's divorced? 
I mean, at the end of the day, if it's half, if it's in, it, it, at the midpoint where the two circles are touching, then half the get is in his daladamos and half the get is in her daladamos. If a husband only halfway gives his wife a get but still holds on to it, that's not a giving of the get. He has to completely release it to his wife. So there shouldn't be a divorce at all. Why is it Suffolk Megureshes? So Ella Rabbi Rav Yosef to Amri to Ravayu Hacha Bishtei Kitei Edem Askinan Echa Someres Karov Lo Vecha Someres Karov La. So the answer is like this. You're right. We're going to stick with our answer of two consent two circles. They're standing at a distance of eight amos from each other. If it comes closer to him, it's still in his domain. She's not divorced. If it's closer to her, it's in her Talan Amos, and she is divorced. And what do we mean Mechza al Mechza, where there are, we don't know where the get fell. We have two witnesses who say that it fell closer in, into her circle, and two witnesses say that it fell closer to him in his circle. That's where we say that she's Suffolk Megureshes. If we know for sure it fell in the center, so then she would not be divorced for sure. But here we have a conflict between what the witnesses are saying. So Rabbi Yochanan Omar, so that's all according to Rav. Now we get to a totally different shita, which is the shita of Rabbi Yochanan, and he says, "Karov lo shaninu afilu meya ama." The karov lo shaninu afilu meya ama. And Rabbi Yochanan shita has, says we're not working at all with the standard four amos of domain in a rishus harabim. Rabbi Yochanan says, in the way Tosfos explains that it's a special din just by gitin, that and the Gemara will actually explicate that shortly. That we're dealing in a situation where they're very far from each other. And the husband throws it like the get, like he's throwing a football. If it lands closer to her, even if it's a hundred amos away, she's divorced. And if it lands closer to him, she's not divorced. So now the Gemara says, well, that doesn't really make much sense, just because it may be a few inches closer to her, but they're both so far away from it. So let's clarify the case. So hechi dami al mechza. So what's the case of halfway? In other words, why should it be that she's a suffix whether she's divorced or not? So of shaman bar abba I am able to, it was explained to me from a Yochanan as follows. Who yachol l'shamro v'hi ena yachol l'shamro zehu karov lo? He yachol l'shamro v'hu ena yachol l'shamro zehu karov la. Shneim yacholim l'shamro, shneim ain yacholim yacholin zehu mechza al mechza. The answer is like this. You're right. According to Rabbi Yochanan, we're not working with four amos of domain. That's not the issue. But what we are working with, and it's got nothing to do with distance, according to Rabbi Yochanan, because that doesn't make sense to say that if it's outside their dalad amos, that distance should make a difference. What we're dealing with is who has the ability to control the get based on where it's currently positioned in, in, in proportion to where each of them is standing. If a, when a husband throws the get to his wife, if she has easy access such that she can just bend over and grab it, even if it's outside her Dalit Amos, but with ease she can just scoop it up, so then she's considered divorced even before she picks it up. If the husband has ease of picking it up and she doesn't, so then she's not divorced. And if it's each each one of them has the same ability to scoop it up, or neither of them have the ability to scoop it up, then it's a suffix whether she's divorced or not. And the example that Rashi cites when he says it's got nothing to do with distance is that let's say from a proximity standpoint the get is closer to her, but there's a huge puddle that she would have to walk through in order to be able to get the get, and she can't cross it with ease. But the husband is a few inches further away from the get, but there's no puddle between him and the get. So since he can more easily scoop it up, she's not divorced. If the situation were reversed, she would be divorced. So Amru Rabbanan Kamei de Rabbi Yochanan Mishmei de Rabbi Yonasan, Hachi, and Omar Yadin Chavrin Bavlo, or Hachi Omar Yadin Chavrin Bavloi Lifru Sheki Haitaima. When Rabbi Yochanan was explained, when someone came to see Rabbi Yochanan and he said, This is how they explain it in your name in Bavel, he said, The Babylonians really got it. In other words, they understand what I meant to say. Tanya Nami Hachi, Rabbi Eliezer Omer, Kol Shuhu Karov La, Milo, Uba Kela Venatlo, Eno Megureshes. The Brysa seems to imply that, because Rabbi Eliezer is quoted in the Brysa saying, is that if as long as the get is closer to her than it is to him, then if a dog comes along and takes it before she has a chance to pick it up, she's not divorced. So the Gemara says, what does this Brysa mean? Eina megureshes kol hechi So that why should she not be divorced? 
What is, if, if, if the get fell into her domain, does she have to watch the get for the rest of her life? As long as it fell into her domain, why isn't she divorced? So, el alav So, the way you have to read the Bryce is as follows. Kol shekarov la milo, vi'ilu bakela v'natlo, v'hu yachol l'shamro, v'hi eno yachol l'shamro, eno migureshes. That even if the get is closer to her than it is to him, but you're dealing in a topography whereby if a dog were to come along, the husband could stop the dog from getting the get, and she would not be able to stop the dog from getting the get, then she's not considered to be divorced. But vice versa, she would be divorced. That's so, so you see that this brisa bears out our interpretation of Rabbi Yochanan, that it's got nothing to do with proximity, but rather it has to do with accessibility. Amr leishmul Rav Yehuda shinana, kideisha tashuach v'titlenu, va'at lo so Shmuel once said to Rav Yehuda, his Talmud, he said, Sharp one, I want you to realize that technically a woman is divorced as long as the get lands in a place where she can easily just bend down and scoop it up. But I don't want you to allow a woman to be divorced in this way, but rather I require that, at least mid you should make sure that the, she should not be considered divorced until the get reaches her hands physically. There was once a Misa as such, where the get fell. A man threw a get, and proximal to his wife, where she had the ability to scoop it up. Before she picked it up, the man got a heart attack and died. And so the rabbi said that even though Midiaraisa technically she's divorced, but, but because of Shmuel's concern, we're going to say that really Midrabanan, she's not considered totally divorced yet, and therefore she has to do chalitza with the decedent's brother. Next, the chen le'inyan kiddushin, the same thing we said is true by kiddushin, that as long as you throw it closer to her than to the husband, she's married. Amar Rabbi Yassi, Amar Rabbi Yechanan, Legitin Amar Uvalola Davar Acher. So Rabbi Yechanan is quoted as saying that this whole halacha, that as long as it's more accessible to her than it is to the husband, that she's divorced, only applies by divorces, but nothing else. In all other cases of transfer, of ownership from one party, from party A to party B, it's got to reach party B. It can't just be proximal to party B. It only works by Gitin. So the Gemara says, Eisvei Rebbe Abba Rebbe Asi V'chein Le'inyan Kiddushin. How can you say that? Our Mishnah says explicitly that not only does it work by Gitin, but it also works for Kiddushin. So the Gemara answers, Shiny Hasam D'chsiv V'yatsa V'haisa. It's different because the Torah connects the laws of Gitin to the laws of Kiddushin. So whatever works for a Git works for Kiddushin, but it doesn't work for anything else, only for those two things. But Eisvei V'chein L'inyan Achov, Z'rok L'chov V'uzarkulo, Karav L'mal V'zach Aloi, V'karv L'lo V'ha how can you say that? It only applies to Gitin and Kiddushin. There's a third case in our Mishnah. Our Mishnah said that it even applies to paying back debts. That as long as the creditor says, toss it to me, as long as it lands closer to the creditor than to the debtor, the debt is considered to be paid. So you see, it doesn't just apply to Gitin, it applies to, to financial issues as well. So the Gemara says, no, it really doesn't. But hacha b'mayaskinan da'amr leiz rok lichovi v'tipater. That really, when you pay back a debt, you've actually got to make sure you put it into the hands of the creditor. But here, the creditor made a special exception. The creditor said, as long as you make sure that it lands closer to me on the ground, I hereby exempt you from any payment. And the truth is, a creditor can make any condition that he wants. A creditor can say, give the money to Plony, and you don't have to pay me anymore. Is that a payment of the debt back to the creditor? No. But a creditor can stipulate that as long as he does it in front of two witnesses, that's a way of exempting the debtor from, from the debt. So it's the same thing over here. Technically, it's not a repayment of the debt, but since the creditor said this is a repayment, that that's the repayment. So the Gemara says, Well, if that's the case, then what's the Chiddush? Why does the mission even have to say it? Of course we know that a creditor can stipulate whatever he wants to constitute repayment of the debt. The Gemara says, Lo tzricha zrok li gitin. Because the answer is, is that the creditor said, throw me the money such that if this were a get, it would work. That's the way he phrases it. In other words, he's sort of being a... a a real, you know, is trying to show that he's an uber chacham, right? He says, really, halachically, this uh, payment is not a payment, but throw it to me as if it was a get, and then we'll consider it a day.
But the Gemara says, but still, Vakati Maila Memra. So again, but still, he's making a stipulation, and we know that a creditor can make whatever stipulation he wants. The Gemara says, The Gemara says that you might have thought that the creditor can later claim after it fell down the, the, the fissure in the earth. He says, I was only kidding. I wasn't. I was just kidding because I thought, you know, I, we, 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 this was like a, a get that you were giving me. I was just joking around. I did, wasn't being serious. No, kamash malan that you can't play games. If you told him, throw it to me like this is a get, and therefore it's considered to be payment, then uh, we take that seriously. So Amar of Chiz the get biyada u meshicha biyado im yachal anaska u lahavio etzla ena megureshes vim lav megureshes. Very interesting case. Obviously, this is a very controlling guy. He needs to be in control all the time, even when he's giving his wife a get. So what he does is he ties a string to the get. He puts it in her hands, but he's still holding on to the other end of the string. So the halacha is, if he could pull it, and the get would come out of her hands, so then that's not a divorce. He hasn't completely relinquished it and given over to her. If, however, the string is very weak, so that if he pulls it, it's going to break, so then that's a get. Now, my time, but increases Veleka, because you need a severance, and there hasn't been severance, because he's still holding on. Amor of Yehuda, haisa yada asua kekatafras v'zarkula, afel pi shehegia get liyada ena megureshes. So Rav Yehuda now says a very interesting thing. He says, let's say, you know, normally when a woman receives a get, how, her, how are her hands supposed to be positioned? So look at my hands. This is the way a woman is supposed to hold her hands to receive the get. You notice that her hands are horizontal to the ground. Now, what would happen if a woman would hold her hands at a 45-degree angle going downwards? So when the husband places the get in her hands, the get inevitably is going to roll down onto the ground. In that situation, the woman is not divorced. So the Gemara says, why? Because she never held on to the get. It just was placed in a, on a, in a part of her body that couldn't, uh, couldn't receive the get as a receptacle. So the Gemara says, but am I? Hakinafil be'arba amos dida kanafil. The Gemara says, but wait a minute. Even if it's going to fall out of her hands immediately, it'll land on the ground within her Dalet amos. So why isn't she divorced according to everybody? So the Gemara answers, bedelonach. The answer is we're talking about a scenario where it doesn't land on the ground. You know why? Because it combusts on its way down to the ground. Let's say she's standing over or standing, uh, what, uh, what, a, a, guy, a, a guy working at a, a flamethrower at the circus, a, a fire breather, uh, ha- happens to walk by as the get is rolling out of her hands and he blows on the get and it just combusts. So that's the case where we're saying that since it didn't hit the ground and it never really stayed in her hands, so then she's not divorced. But the Gemara says, but wait a minute, But one second says the Gemara, uh, what you're suggesting is, is that while it's on its way down to the ground, that's not considered to, her, to be her domain. But that was the, exactly the question of Rebbe Lazar. Rebbe Lazar had asked, when we say that a person in Rishus HaRabim has four amos of domain radius, is it only when it, the object hits the ground of the Rishus HaRabim, or does it even just even when it enters into the airspace? According to what you're saying now, you can answer Rebbe Lazar's kasha. If it only entered into the airspace but never hit the ground, it's not her domain. Is that what you're suggesting? So the Gemara says, no. We're going to let Rebbe Lazar's question stand in its own validity. This is not an answer to that question because we're talking about a case where a woman is standing by the river bank. And because she's standing by the river bank and her hands are uh, uh, hanging over the river, the raging river, it's known, it's clear that because she's holding her hands this way on a slope, the get will never stay in her hand. It's going to immediately roll over into the river, which is going to wash it away. Then it's never po- even possible for the get to be contained within her airspace and hit the ground. Rebbe Lazar was talking about a situation where if it's eventual, that an object that comes within my Dalet Amos will eventually or is expected to hit the ground, at what point do I acquire it? Do I have to wait until it hits the ground or do I acquire it right away even while it's still airborne? That question is going is to sit.
But this is a scenario where everyone knows it's never going to hit the ground because the river's going to wipe it away. In that situation, even Rebbe Lazar would agree that the airspace, while it's still airborne, is not considered to be my domain because since it's never destined to hit the ground within my Dalit Amos, then even the airspace that's above that ground is not considered my domain either.